so we have uh, this is a discussion uh, and uh, i'll probably when i get a little tired i'll sit but otherwise uh, let me continue like this uh, so this topic is slightly different though, though we have been talking about uh, data centers uh, private cloud and all throughout the session i will continue to do that today also but this is specifically on no building hyperscale data centers uh, where do people need where, uh, why is it needed okay and uh, when do people need so i'll uh, probably uh, start with uh, requesting prasad to give a very brief intro and then we'll go with questions to uh, the ciao panelists yeah so thank you very much uh, for giving me this opportunity and i would like to uh, thanks all cios who are sitting out here uh, so hyperscale data center is a need of the hour and uh, when i s when we say hyperscale that means a data center which is not a traditional one so uh, in a short and crisp way a traditional data center cannot accommodate a hyperscale workload but a hyperscale data centers can accommodate traditional workload so that's the uh, base of the crux of the matter now uh, capital and we are developing uh, green field state of the art hyperscale data centers across uh, five major metros that is mumbai hyderabad uh, chennai bangalore and noida and these are not stand alone buildings but these are the data center campuses so uh, when we say data center campus that means a customer who are with us from day 1 can scale up uh, for next 5 to 10 years in the same campus so that's the kind of hyperscale uh, data center we are building we are also getting into in depth of the specifications of uh, the hyperscale data center that is uh, floor loading then the slab to slab height rack density so these are all details which are get which gets into the design to build a hyperscale in the last 5 years has it significantly changed so what are the uh, if yes so what are those changes what you were looking at when you were building a data center in say 2018 or so and today so what are the changes yeah so i come from the uh, mutual fund industry uh so for us uh, uh, one of the uh, key things that we look at when I mean, we try to uh, see if we can host uh, our systems outside our uh, premises is uh, whether it's in a different seismic zone to begin with so availability zones are very very essential for us we need to have data centers which are uh, present across in case we want to do real time replication my uh, governance my br uh, dcp strategies need to be evolved around whatever uh, you know data centers that i kind of uh, choose uh, of course the resiliency the you know the whether it's T3, uh, not tier three, tier four. Uh, you know, all those angles do come into account you know, when we try to select a data center for us. It's very essential that these parameters are kind of uh, because these are all uh, uh, you know uh, real time challenge. I mean, we honestly, it's not that okay. They are just because the regulator is telling me that I should do it, but the regulator actually has given us very in depth. Uh, Uh, you know checkpoints as to he asks you know what is your rta rto going to be or you no know, uh, rpo going to be he actually asks us to document and when we do a dr drill or you know so for us these all parameters are very very essential that we are able to meet those standards in terms of because end of the day we are for us every investor transaction needs to be uh, you know happening at the time it should you know we can't delay any transaction there is a cut off you can't at certain point of time you may have a, you know during the cut off a huge amount of transactions coming in so whether your uh, uh, back end systems are really able to scale up to that particular uh, level of efficiency uh, so we keep those things in mind when we actually uh, look into uh, while we may not be uh, you know doing a dr every day but uh, you know maybe i mean fortunately we never come to a situation where we need to open the dr but yeah our tests that we do and all uh, we need to see to it that the compliances are in place the governance is in place the checkpoints are all there and we are able to run business as usual i mean the in for us uh, business need not worry if my back end is going to be uh, up and running or not right for them it's going to be more of strategizing 
you know what next that we need to do i mean uh, we they need to have a simple uh, piece of mind saying that hey, everything seems, uh, is running you don't have to worry about as far the business operations in technology area is concerned okay that's that's yeah and that's from a fairly regulated industry's point of view so that's a significant factor but let me ask this same question to eklak and where the drives are, uh, you know the drivers are not really uh, a central regulator decisions but the most demanding regulator which is your uh, the end customers so uh, so what are those changes and uh, has there been any fundamental shift that you see in the last 4 5 years that you know some of those uh, things have changed the basic parameters which were priority and to what you see today have changed main change is uh, the uh, on prem data centers uh, integration with public clouds uh, for us uh, in the modern day and when you are not under heavy regulation uh, adoption of cloud is uh, important so that you get rid of uh, Uh, a lot of headache that you have to carry if you were to manage your own uh, infrastructure at the same time on prem comes with its own advantages so uh, one thing that you would want uh, your data center to have is the ability to scale up to a public cloud and scale back to to on prem and the ability to jump from one public cloud to the other should the situation require so you're not married to amazon or azure or gcp you should be able to, uh, you should be cloud agnostic at the same time when your load is low uh, you are able to manage uh, in a more economical way but when you need to scale which can which can happen on rush days or rush hours uh, you scale up to the public cloud and you come back okay so so basically integration it is first uh, you know on prem to public and now an optimized combination of both right yes. so ashok i have a very specific question over you come from manufacturing which uh, where we are here and i keep this question asking this question probably informally also to you many times so edge you know uh, we are hearing a lot about you know edge especially in manufacturing with specific use cases uh, plant safety and uh, uh, even quality you know analysis uh, your analytics close to the production center so uh is that for real and if yes or if you see that you know trends moving towards that direction then how will it impact your overall infrastructure that is your core data center on prem and public cloud so how how, how that what is the impact of edge in a simple sentence yeah so from manufacturing perspective quite a good question um yes age is being picking up a uh, lot of discussions are happening towards the age right and this is true in manufacturing so basically what i can see everybody talks about the cloud but nowadays uh, considering the manufacturing uh, facilities at various location and uh, very design centric which has a low, high volume of the data wherein the connectivity latency has an issue right many times we take a decision wherein we need a data center on prem or may not be central instance itself right so this this i can say sometime it is a decloudification right we were talking about the cloud right sometime we talk as no 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 not cloud so come back come back to this one and the challenge is why why this is being talked only because of the heavy data data center are capable enough but the road to take that data center right which is latency connectivity that is somehow is not a very satisfactory right and that is always a worry right and this is the reason uh, right we are talking about the age data center this is one portion another portion specifically in our scenario um, as i was talking to this uh, oem also has uh, multiple data centers right and many times right and they have different uh, design centers also they also have their own r&d and design facilities are there uh, in oem you uh, in manu- uh, automobiles you must have saw that our most of the plants are near to oem plants right this is their strategy and the similar way what happens many times this design exchange has to happen with the data center also right so for example one oem having their r&d center in hyderabad we having in pune may not what if you have a, the data center which is near to hyderabad will make more sure right 
in such a scenario the connectivity becomes a challenge and there we talk about the cloud application another most important aspect is that every factory is now going towards the industry 4.0 which is generating a high amount of data right and we already have a worry right the bills of this cloud service provider what will happen to that one well if you look at to this one cfo always is ready to capex investment today also right boards is ke okay ek bar capex le lete let's do this one so still they are in the favor of the capex investment but opex is always a worry because it fluctuates right unless we don't have pred- clear predictability how much will be right till the time i think this trend will be favored by many of the it leaders and boards as well yeah you brought about uh, this uh, good point about predictability uh, i'll i'll go to prasad and uh, ask this uh, uh, see what is this what are basically the differentiating uh, factors of a hyperscale design data center and as he said uh, predictability how important is that like while predictability for an online uh, company and what predictability for him or a manufacturing means could be very very different so uh, maybe you can uh, you know uh, answer that so uh, if you look at uh, so i'll i'll not term it as a hyperscale data center because hyperscale is is actually related to building so uh, we are really looking at a future proof data center right where we are talking about not only the requirements of uh, specific verticals like bfsi manufacturing uh, and also fmcg but now uh, we 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 were discussing in ideas cafe where uh, we wanted to come out with a differentiating features for our services and uh, from the like kirti ma'am uh, also told us that the features are given like you know rack densities your slab to slab height your floor loading four diverse path tier 3 up time all all this is given but what is additionally you know cios are looking at is they want to grow in the same campus if so we are building data center campuses we are not building a stand alone buildings so in case of 3 years 4 years 5 years down the line the businesses can strive thrive in the same campus right and that is number one second uh, a predictive alerts now cios want a predictive alerts there are itsm system which throws the alerts but there are very false alerts and it is very difficult to find out which is the predictive alert which a cio can really do a rca of it so as a capital land we are developing a itsm system topping up with a automation platform which is a no code low code and also customizing it for each and every customer as well as a vertical so a cio with a click of button can view his entire infrastructure he can set up the thresholds he can get the alerts that's number one second he can also uh, you know in case of compliances bfsi they are regulated by multiple things and if they are doing any uh, audits and the audit needs to be specific for uh, the reporting structure needs to be specific so they just have to go to the audit section click on the which is the audit and just with the click of button they will get the report now here we are not even talking about a physical interference or a person or a grc team which is facilitating facilitating their uh, requirements or the uh, you know their team to come to the physically to data center show the servers no we are talking about the automation so this is this is the uh, actually a future data center features we are talking about third the most critical factor is the cost and the transparency right so when we are now we have we'll we'll have to go look at the equilibrium we are building a hyperscale data center where we are putting huge amount of capex just to ensure a power for next 20 years we are investing 200 crores up front for the gis substation right we are building a 8 meter high slab to slab height and uh, to accommodate the workloads and all but that we have to somehow equi- come to a equilibrium where a enterprise should not be overloaded for the hyperscale design 
So, we have got that equilibrium because we are not only a real estate company, but we have the technology background as well, where we bring all this together and offer it as a service. So, it is as good as a future proofing data center, you can call it. Okay, that's a very tall uh, <laughs> claim to have, but yeah, but one thing specifically I picked up from what you said, you say we are kind of customizing it for different needs, verticals. So, uh, can we have a quick round of, you know, when you talk up and because we are from, uh, panelists are from three very different segments. Uh, so, what do you mean by that, you know, which you can say not specifically your, but in general, your vertical uh, as compared to the rest of, uh, you know, other, other businesses. What are those one or two things, if we can have a quick round from all of you, maybe starting with Anand. No, so uh, one of the things that we were also discussing earlier was, you know, how much of these uh, alerts can be more proactive, more predictive and kind of help me, uh, you know, uh, understand my needs, you know, like typically some of the operations, you know, on a specific time interval, they may suddenly go up and uh, we may be throttled for maybe a bandwidth at that point of time or a scale. So also... When we go on a cloud, you know, there are this n number of services that come out, right? So, how many of them are actually getting monitored? We really don't know. It's only when something goes off, you come to know, hey, this was not working. So, how do you ensure that every single area is kind of covered uh, and when the regulator also comes in and does his audit and everything, you know, we are able to have those documentations, have those logs in place. Uh, I mean, uh, you have circulars coming out which talks of, you know, log monitoring and, you know, incident management being to be reported to even uh, uh, the NCI, PC, certain teams, you know, within six hours of time. So, how do you ensure that the entire process becomes seamless and we have the relevant RCA, we are able to, so for, for us, the uh, it's very necessary that things are more proactive than, you know, reactive uh, because the time lost is lost. I can't really bring it back, right? So, if I can... If, if I can, if systems can tell me, you know, hey, you are going to be about to be breaching something and then you are given necessary alerts, which will help me, you know, work more proactively to bring that efficiency, you know, those are the things that I would like to look at. Ashok, what about you? You ask the question how our industry is different yeah. than yeah, yeah, at yeah, a center yeah. point of view, right? It's a different yeah. issue. I think the one difference, though we say that the consumer industries or BFSI, we are the large customer base is there, right? And is there a volume of the data is high. Right. But according to me, equally the challenge is for manufacturing also. So we are B2B business, right? We may not have billions of customers, right? But the number of transactions the machine gives, right, back, right, through the IoT devices <laughs> is as high as the consumer. See, understand, yeah, maybe more, right? See, understand, last, I mean, two months back, we did uh, one project for our DCD business, uh, die casting business, wherein we have integrated an IoT enabled for 84 parameters on 300 mold and PLC machines, right? Which uses me, me the real-time OLE and OE. So understand, every minute, 84 parameters data, right? 300 machines are throwing, right? So it's amount of data, as it is a challenge, Similarly, the challenge is being for manufacturing industry also, though it looks to be B2B. Many times we say B2B, how many of you have? How many But the amount of data that is generated on shop floor through the various processes is high. So that is that is the one challenge I think we need to consider and for that marketing. Is that is going to be the case. While doing this one, another challenge is getting busy, right? This being this new area, right? Cyber security is becoming a challenge. Because, see, for the, there is some maturity has come in BFSI, knowing the consumer behavior, these are the processes that are matured, right? This is put together a new paradigm shift, right? Newly we are created process. So there, security is becoming a challenge. Something unknown will happen and then your machine stops, right? It's as good as your billing stops somewhere at peak level. Similarly, if machine stops, your entire OLE and OE for that debt production is gone, right? So these are the two different differentiating yeah, factors so in our industry. Yeah. That change towards that so-called industry 4.0. Correct, correct. Is, is definitely changing the need, definitely. Oh, okay, so in your case, uh, it is a consumer industry and uh, uh, volumes are large, may not be like machines, but uh, but it is not mechanical, it is not predictable. You know, human beings. The only thing uh, that I've spoken about that is uh, true, so we spoke about the instrumentation model. 
alerting extremely important for us also and for anyone. Information security, the more digital you become, the more exposed you are. And uh, the amount of gen uh, data that IoT generates, it's, it's, uh, it's simply mind-boggling. Sending all of the data to the cloud and data center is, uh, is, is a real challenge. Uh, we are a B2C business, unlike a B2B business. Uh, for us, two things are very important, uptime and latency. Uh, on 31st December, we clocked 2,500 orders in a minute. Uh, and, uh, you know, one point of time, we are going to clock 5,000 orders in a minute. And before this, I was with a, uh, with a loan company and before that, I was with a life insurance company. So, when systems went down, I did not lose orders per se because, uh, you know, the, the, the customer is, of course, online orders uh, I lost. Um, uh, but your systems came back in, you process the customer files, whether it is loan or life insurance. But here, in the minute and during that second, you can lose the customer. Uh, if you open the Domino's app or Zomato or Swiggy and you don't see the store uh, online, you're going to lose the customer. They're not coming back. At least that's a revenue loss. And the second thing is latency. Uh, when you're ordering on uh, Domino's or Dunkin's or Zomato or Swiggy, uh, you know, for the menu to load, uh, for the cart to load, for the payment to process, if that is slow and you get that, cursor going all round and round, uh, that makes for poor customer experience. So for us, uh, it is the uptime. Every second counts for us, uh, both from an uptime po point of view as well as uh, latency. Absolutely. So that I think pretty combines all that any industry would need and we have a good diverse thing. I think uh, uh, that brings us to the end of the discussion. Usually what I do is I ask to summarize and respond to the our partner panelist but since he's going to speak he can do that in his uh, uh, you know his talk yeah yeah, yeah. Right. so so that uh, so thanks everyone but yes as you set up i'll uh, it is time for the lucky draw <laughs>